that reason, they'll have to do it all pretty well in the field. They have to bowl straight, bowl a bit of length in particular to Adam Gilchrist. He will be the key. They've made changes in the bowling department, of course, with Wiseman back in, the off spinner, and also Simon Dool coming in. Now, he had a great time of it bowling to Sarev Ganguly this time last year, and the left-hander from India couldn't lay bat on Simon Dool from time to time, and he's brought back principally to knock over the danger man there in the background, Adam Gilchrist. If he can get rid of him, and Chris Cairns can bowl well to Mark War, New Zealand get early wickets, they have a chance to win one in this series and restore a bit of pride and, I'm sure, a lot of confidence. This time for Chris Nevin, he made a good little contribution with the bat, but now the main job of work, the reason he's come in to replace Parori is because uh, Adam Parori was making too many mistakes for the selectors liking, so uh, any half chances have to go to hand and they have to stick. Let's join our commentary pairing for the first seven overs of this reply for Australia, they need 244 to win, David Hooks and Jeremy Coney. Thank you very much Ian. And uh, this should be a terrific evening's cricket here. With New Zealand giving Australia a target of 244 to chase. Are they going to be good enough to defend a reasonable total without being outstanding? Chris Cairns will take the new ball. They need it early against New Zealand. The opening partnerships in the last two games when Australia has made 310 and 349 have been big, big partnerships between Gilchrist and Mark War. The two sets in place and the gully. Fine leg is up for Gilchrist and square leg is on the fence. Desperately need wickets, early wickets New Zealand to put the pressure on. It's Cairns first ball to Gilchrist. Right on line. It's a better balanced bowling side at Jerry, isn't it? Yes, it does look better with um the two spinners in with Simon Dool, who can perhaps move the ball in the air early on, perhaps pick up a wicket. That's what New Zealand needs. I'm still not sure, though, about the man out square, David. see the man there, the left of your screen, he's the man out on the boundary on the leg side to Adam Gilchrist. That's uh, Sinclair. And the man up inside the circle at fine leg. Now, I just wonder if you're a fast bowler at the top of your mark, what that actually says to you. First of all, I think it means that it's set for a bad ball. That's that man Sinclair coming in there now. The second thing I think it does as a bowler is that it asks you not to bowl short but the problem with that is is that the fine leg is up and so in fact what you end up doing is dragging it down a wee bit. Now Gilchrist doesn't really play a drop kick stroke, he tends to play the horizontal bat as Mark Ward has come to face now, wonderful record. And I think the other thing it tends to do is it forces you as a bowler to drag it down short on the offside, so you tend to get hit through the offside as well. So two slips, no gully. Three men on the offside, saving the Mark War single, and two on the leg side. Third man and five leg. In the air. Absolutely, a good catch, sharp catch by Nathan Astle. An attacking stroke, Mark War is gone. Caught Astle by Cairns, one for one. Wednesday on Fox Sports, right after Australia's most comprehensive worldwide sports news, Cameron Williams presents NRL on Fox. Then at 10 o'clock, all the latest news and standings in the English Premier League.
every one of you can call New Zealand for just $6 for each half hour. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week with Telstra 0018 Easy Half Hours. Telstra Easy Rates for every one of you. Get into Harvey Norman for a red-hot deal on an air conditioner. We have two and a half horsepower reverse cycle split systems from as low as $19.95. And you can buy now and get two years interest-free terms. Top brands like Fujitsu, Panasonic, Kelvinator, Samsung, Electra and LG. Plus five years parts and labour warranty. Split systems and room air conditioners all on display and sale now. Installation's not a problem. Keep your cool. Hurry into Harvey Norman before the heat sends you crazy. Harvey Norman, go! Hayden has come into the... The number three spot for Australia, 17th match, all half centuries, and has been in pretty good form in the games that he's played so far, but now he's in in the first over, a nice test for Matthew Hayden, bowling with a spring in the can step. Well, this is exactly what New Zealand needed, early wickets, especially when you post a target of only just over 240. Astle the man at second slip after scoring the 100. There's the catch from the reverse angle. Two hands, reverse cup. Celebration in the slips. So the end of a successful over. Just the perfect way for New Zealand to start. Australia one for one, chasing 244. Just a little bit of a sloppy Mark Wall shot. He's never quite as good driving through the offside at the beginning of his innings as he is as the innings progresses. He's a wonderful player once he's settled. He's so much more comfortable early in his innings playing through mid-wicket, wider mid-on. Still, he's gone. Two left handers at the crease. What will Simon Dool do? Per over required. Simon Dorr to do the uh, work for New Zealand back in this side after his Kentucky tour is finished. High run rate per over, Simon Dorr, just over five. Not quite one wicket per match. If you just pick up a couple of early wickets tonight, wouldn't this get this crowd in a frenzy? Great start by New Zealand. Australia will start to think about the total. He's on one. And just a single. May have been a little inside edge. Have a look at the umpire to check that no signal. No signal. fantastic performance. 19 times he scored over 50 in 91 matches. High score. An Australian record of 154. Right, it's Matthew Hayden. Alert. Simon Dool just in the channel there. That's where he's got to be to the left-hander. Generally makes the ball swing. New Zealand's best attacking weapon in tests. When Simon Bill started to play one day internationals for New Zealand, it was 92-93 against Zimbabwe, there have been 160 one day games involving New Zealand since that date. He's only played in 40, in other words, 25%. And yet, curiously, really New Zealand's best test bowler. One day internationals, he struggles a little bit. Doesn't play many overseas. And a lovely clip shot by Matthew Hayden. He's just the right hitting pace, Simon Dool, if you're in form. 
and Matthew Hayden has scored the first boundary for Australia. Well, the thing here, Dool really needs to get the ball to swing. Here it just holds its line, and we saw Astle hitting McGrath early on, and that's just length, really. Nice, free swing, good contact. Dool must get it to swing. at the crease and Michael Bevan is probably due to come in next so if I was Stephen Fleming I wouldn't be ruling out the possibility of bowling Wiseman quite early while the left handers are at the crease particularly when they're just at the crease which he's going to get the new ball a chance to do its damage came in nice and late Hayden looks in good form again two overs gone Thanks to the boundary, Australia six for one. Good pitch for batting. Steve Wall won the toss and elected to bowl and didn't get out of it what he would have liked. Then McGraw was spanked in the early part of his bowling spell. Changed. Online and clipped away nicely. They look for two, but they won't get it. Storis doing well. Skins, just keeping all the batsmen honest. Well, War's an important wicket too for the New Zealanders. While clearly Gilchrist has been outstanding and dominated the New Zealanders, War is just at the other end. And this is the reason. We have the run just tucked away on the leg side. War has just collected at the other end, particularly through the middle phase of the Australian innings, scoring singles virtually at will and allowing players like Hayden, like Gilchrist, to get on strike once they get going was what the New Zealand batsmen weren't able to do to Astle in the middle phase earlier today. Yes. Nice place to gain. He managed quite square for Hayden. Yeah. comparison between the top orders of both teams, New Zealand and Australia. And he, he likes them up here in the slot. Doesn't get his foot to the pitch of the ball. Just lets the eyes and the hands do all the work and still a boundary. And a crash and a collision. And Roger Tews has kicked in the fence. See, not big foot movement, just playing the line and using the hands. Roger Tews chases hard. He always look, looks as if he's running into a, a strong headwind, doesn't he, Roger Tews? But look, he's, I think he's smashed that. But George said he did kick an athlete. Dully has been moved out, so a normal cover. Shout by Chris Cairns, uh, more out of excitement than anything else. Let's see if this moves from the pitch, from the seam. Just a little, and again, no feet at all from Gilchrist. Just stands and looks to play from there. Interesting with the ball moving in the air to a player like that. Six 
runs from it though. Australia 12 for one. Okay, well here you can see the, the four of the first four wickets, that F4W, first four wickets. That's where the bulk of the runs are scored by one day teams. And you can see there New Zealand 31 for the first four wickets. They, those, uh, the fall of that was in the 10.4 over and at three runs per over at that stage. Simon Dill, Matthew Hayden. and close it does move a bit and my word the batter's a long way away did well as i say a long way away did the bat hit the pad as it came through yes it did new zealand is uh, unconvinced it's a pretty good decision people in this commentary box have been quite harsh on the umpires over this series but they get a pat on the back when they deserve it so a few flutters for the Australians for the first time for a long time old thing just apologising to Simon Dool but it's one of the security staff jumping onto the ground to fetch an error to ball trying to get it. First sign of madness, Simon, talking to yourself. He's talking his way right to the top of his mark. He seems to be coming out of it reasonably well, though. That is only a face that a mother could love, surely. Nah, just coming into the left-handers pad. Dangerous. The problem is with Dool, he's trying to swing it. So he floats it up there to get the extra swing. And if it's on middle stump coming down and swings into the pad, then these two left-handers will murder him. Well, the length, you see, that's, he needs that length to try and get it to swing. And he just tucked it away nicely off the legs. Just a scent that it's just coming off, you see. Well-weighted, Hayden. Trying to get the ball to leave the left hand. It would have been a wide if Hayden hadn't have reached a long way. But there is some genuine swing for Dool. Well, this one goes the other way. And uh, Hayden having to work pretty hard. But the encouraging thing, at least, in Dool's second over, is that he's able to get the ball to swing. better because that's in a bit closer you see and uh, with the two slips in Hayden looking to drive well there's a man Paul Wiseman hopefully will be used by Stephen Fleming I've seen that smile too much May disappear here. Couple of leg buys. And dinner was lovely here as always. Desperately love a wicket. It's 19 for 1. Tonight 
on Fox Sports News, Pat Rafter makes a successful comeback to the ATP Tour with a first up win at Delray Beach. Ricky Ponting fails a fitness test on his injured ankle. Kangaroo skipper Wayne Carey escapes suspension at the AFL Tribunal. And Team New Zealand just one win away from defending the America's Cup. Full details of those stories and more tonight on Fox Sports News at 8.30 Eastern Summer Time. Four overs gone. We'll get a Mark Wall first ball that he faced. Pilgrim had taken a single. First couple of balls of the cans over, and then Mark Wall a sharp catch to Centurion at second slip. Big crowd, lights are on. Crowd, some sense of expectations and anticipation. It is Cairns to do this. Lovely shot, four runs. Well, not the way you really want to start an over, is it? Cairns looks towards the fieldsman, whether you're in the right place, but that's just classical stuff from Gilchrist. Cairns going for over seven runs per over in this series. He's been a bit expensive. Some of that's forgivable because he's tried to take early wickets, regarding himself as the only attacking bowler. But he really needs to be more difficult to score from. That's better. Into the fifth over, I wonder how Stephen Fleming will use this young man, the off-spinner, with the left-handers at the crease, one to come. Big spinner of the ball. Hasn't been used a lot in his one-day career. Seven one-day matches, could have bowled a potential 70 overs. Bowled just 24. Will he get 10 tonight? Australians traditionally haven't played Austrian bowling outstandingly well. Some players, of course, have, but they also found a difficulty in scoring it quality off spinners in one-day matches in particular. So he may well be the man that plays an important role in the New Zealand bowling structure. The configuration that will be used. still get to the fence. So expensive over yet again to Cairns. Nine runs from it already. Still a ball to go. Well, Cairns, again, just too full and too wide. He knows it straight away. And Hayden away to a very quick start again. So five hours have gone. It is 28-4-1. Every one of you can call New Zealand for just $6 for each half hour. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. With Telstra 0018 Easy Half Hours. Telstra Easy Rates for every one of you. He's currently the state champion in this match. Can he go one better? He's got a good grip. He's raised the bar. That's it. A gold medal for Australia. John Bull, sports shoe comfort in a work boot. See Vittori there. If you extrapolate that out, that's about 260 runs at Vittori's rate. That's not too bad against Australia. But look at the wickets there. Waiting, waiting. Especially when you consider it with how the New Zealand bowlers went against the West Indies. Look, maiden overs, plenty there. More wickets. 
less runs per over, better average, better all round, under much more pressure against Australia. This man is one of the reasons why. Second man of the match awards. And over and wide of second slip. Just needs a wicket, Simon Dahl. One to get the second Australian wicket, but one for himself as well. Well, you see, it wasn't quite wide enough to do that, although there was a hint of just steering it from uh, Gilchrist. Just a wee bit of extra bounce got the top outside edge of the bat. A bit of stutter and a lost count by Dool. Simon Dool, happy, loves playing cricket. Wouldn't have loved to have seen that. Very clever shot by Gilchrist. Why? You're right, Jerry. The smile has gone. players love to get on the front foot and drive it's a natural shot for them you see Hayden move just naturally into the forward position and if he wants to swing he's got to throw it up there so it's a nice little battle that Dool has in his own mind at the moment both these players know the ball is swinging around but they are pretty happy to get on the front foot well, the other option of course for Dool is once he sees Hayden to come onto that front foot, he start to vary his pace. We saw Fleming early on, undone by Damien Fleming. The same sort of thing for Simon Dould. He's got the cover in. I just think that the New Zealand bowlers hopefully have been watching their counterparts and how difficult they were to score when they used that slower ball. going to be able to restrict Australia to under 244. Certainly have to get seven or eight wickets, if not the entire ten. Perhaps they get down to seven or eight, they might restrict the talent in the latter stage of this evening's bowling. They need to get some wickets. Already got Mark War. And then once again, straight into the apple. Adam Gilchrist into the Adam's apple. Thirty-two for one. Well, you can see here, just a suggestion of not timing that from Hayden, and uh, really, just like William Tell. scored over 300 on the last four occasions they've batted a full 50 overs what an amazing statistic so Fleming will have his work cut out so trying to restrict them is going to be very very difficult and he gets some Australian wickets no. well, it's a much better length from Cairns He's not a man that swings the ball. 
and yet he's been pitching the ball just up a little bit too much I think if he can just force Gilchrist perhaps onto the and particularly Hayden onto the back foot you can see here it's, to, it's a much better tighter line and Gilchrist again doesn't move the feet very much yep and uh, no second slip in place it's much wider than that anyway that man has gone to uh, short move again as a catching man Astor will go back into the slips now for Hayden. Ooh, down there, a little bit of washing and ironing. Third man for the two left-handers. that comes now really for Stephen Fleming is he going to be prepared to bring Paul Wiseman in now that two left-handers are at the crease Evan of course maybe next these are the sort of opportunities that you get presented with you've got to grab them Gilchrist's great strength and that of all very good players is the ability to play the ball very late and even though he's allowing the ball to come for a sliding shot he doesn't get away from himself the ball comes into the body he waits for it and then he tries to make a decision as to what he will do Well, this one's a bit quicker from Christopher Cairns. We had the slow ball previous. This one, Gilchrist sees the length, thinks he can pull it, but it's through him before he's into the shot. goes up high, a chance for a catch, Dyer's running back, be a very good catch, and it is. Well, what a huge wicket for New Zealand. Slower ball from Christopher Cairns, Gilchrist tries to go down the ground, gets underneath it too much, Styrus running back the ball, coming over his left shoulder, two hands, safe, Gilchrist gone. The 14, 34 for two. The ANZ Tour continues live on Fox Sports with the final round of the season. A Tour Championship. Oh, what about that? Australian champions and the best from overseas take up the challenge at Royal Canberra Golf Club for a slice of the half a million dollars in prize money. What a way to finish. Exclusively live, the Tour Championship starts midday Thursday on Fox Sports. The Nissan Challenge is on again. We challenge you to find a car with more features than a Pulsar Plus for just $19,990. We challenge you to find one with air conditioning, CD, airbag, remote central locking, alloy wheels, plus a rear spoiler. And we challenge you to get it for just $19,990. The Nissan Challenge. Take it up at your Nissan dealer. Michael Bevan has come to the crease. They had to wait a while because a couple of New Zealanders brought out drinks for their players. They've been out there for seven overs. I don't really think that warrants holding up the game for a glass of water. Similarly, Matthew Hayden had one as well. Pretty soon to the stage where we don't need drinks breaks, except for commercials. Because the players get enough. Every time a wicket falls or something happens, guys run out with a tray of drinks. An amazing record for Michael Bevan. Averaging 58, it's been over 60 for a fair while. Strike rate of 76. Only 300, it's 100, but that's due mainly to the fact that he spent a lot of his career at number six. Well, 
Well, Gukas just getting underneath this too much, too much loft, giving Stars the chance to get back. Not always easy though, uh, you're at mid on, see it's a slower ball, and uh, you're running away, you're back to the pitch, like that, having to keep your head as still as you can, moving around, keep this balance quite well. isn't it when uh, the ball's swinging in the air it also continues to hold its line so it, in a sense it's like seeming as well Nevin new man from Wellington behind the stumps no. well this is in closer Australian wickets have fallen. Both opens have gone. The damaging war and Gilchrist and it never looks like that if he gets dropped for Saturday's game, he could ride the fifth at Wellington. Right, and Devon chases after it. Good piece of fielding by Vittori. Tory looks a little uncomfortable there. Whether he's just stretching a muscle, he's going to be a key ingredient in New Zealand's attack. Shane Warne did such a good job. The first few overs from War as well. So the slow bowlers for New Zealand are going to have their work cut out but they've got some early wickets. Left-handers in, you'd think Wiseman fairly shortly, although perhaps with the ball moving like this, perhaps Dool might be kept going a little longer. Michael Bevan going to that square leg position yet again. He's hit it quite nicely. Sinclair, the fieldsman. Three runs to end the over. It's 37 for two. This Sunday, you're invited to join our live TV audience at Sydney's newest family sports bar and restaurant and experience a great new show, Fox Sports Central. Meet special guests Costa Zoo and Penrith's Pantherettes as we review all the weekend's NRL games, including the Tigers against the Panthers and the Roosters clash with the Eagles live on our big screens. Plus, there's a chance to win some fantastic prizes throughout the show. So come on down to Sports Central at Fox Studios this Sunday afternoon. Eight overs gone, two Australian wickets have fallen, the two openers, Gilchrist and War. Steve War, Martin Harvey, Lee to come, so plenty of strong batting for Australia. Cairns with the two wickets, and he will, will resume, bowling to Bevan, who's on three, Hayden on 16. Shortest ball just to test out Michael Bevan. He's had some problems with the short pitch delivery over the past three or four years. Changing the commentary position, it's Gavin Larson and with him Ian Smith. Thanks David, yes, if you're going to bowl short, make sure it troubles the batsman. And that was uh, a good enough line to do that. Good height. Stephen Fleming, if you'd have said to him during the break, you can have Mark War and Adam Gilchrist back in the hut at the start of the ninth over. So thank you very much. How much do you want for that? That is the way it is. New Zealand have a real chance. Patient, put the ball in the right spot, back it up in the field. 
might uh, stand on top of the dais this time around. Spirit from Chris Cairns here. Michael Bevan taking that on the splice of his bat. Good energy being shown. Simon Dool back in the one day fold for his country. Hasn't played a lot of one day cricket over the years. He'll be enjoying this chance. but they haven't been under enough pressure perhaps in the last 13 games might have won uh, 12 in a row anyway and they're looking for 13 this is the comparison both teams having lost two wickets he's going to hit on the uh, on the scoreboard Long way to go yet. Certainly the sort of start that New Zealand wanted. with Jeremy Coney and David Hooks about uh, how long Simon Dool might bowl for and what Fleming will do with his bowlers early on, Gavin. Certainly uh, one day is that uh, Simon has played in the past. He tends to bowl a, a longish first spell, as long as it's coming out all right. And certainly he's not a bowler that has come back uh, overly successfully later in the innings. Through the gap and that'll go all the way. It's nicely timed on this occasion. And a lovely shot this one. Just a long half volley really. Dool searching for that extra bit of swing. Bevan punching that lovely through extra cover. Nice flow of the bat. Two slips in place there because they want Dool really to bowl six out of six across the left-handers. Just for me, is showing that he's a bit short of a gallop in this kind of environment. He's bowled some overs for Northern Districts, but uh, he's cut down his options, Stephen Fleming, in that he hasn't got a gully. And it's work on the theory that it's a fine edge, and he's got three catching options: the keeper himself and Nathan Astle. So he's just been a little wayward to make the plan work too often. It's certainly a, uh, a big step up from playing provincial cricket, running in and bowling against these powerful Australian batsmen. 
certainly from all New Zealand cricket followers <coughs> point of view it's good to see him back and uh, with the National Bank Test Series just around the corner it's an excellent sight to see Simon Dahl back fit again and running in judge of a run Michael Bevan and he's deceptively quick Scott Styrus thought he was in business here but I'd be very surprised if uh, Bevan wasn't safe Judge of a run into the over, Australia 44 for two. 